Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. So this time I actually, I'm filming the outro after we've already done the work. Don't ask me why, I honestly don't know why. Uh, probably because there's been so many twists and turns. So this episode is full of twists and turns, redesigns, building some things that we didn't need to build but are really awesome to build and that we kept. Uh, and uh, also mounting a really, really awesome air to water intercooler for the Huracan. Stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Metal Supermarkets. Now you guys know that I source all my metal from Metal Supermarkets. You're going to see a lot of aluminum being used in today's episode, which we got all of it from Metal Supermarkets. Metal Supermarkets is a one-stop shop to get everything that you need. They call it the convenience store for metal. You can just roll in there. They have so much stuff you're going to find. You're gonna find what you need. They have a huge inventory that's varied across different shapes and sizes and different types of metal and all that good stuff. So you don't have to worry about going to different suppliers for the different things that you need. They also will cut to size. So you don't have to worry about buying a lot more material than what you're actually gonna use. And they have no minimum order quantity. So again, you're not paying for anything that you don't need. And they have very fast service. Uh, you can call ahead of time if you want and place your order, but I don't even do that. I just roll down there and pull the stuff off the shelves that I want. I have it cut to size. I'm in and out very quickly. And above all else, they have great customer service. I really enjoy hanging out and talking with the people that work there. Uh, and they don't make you feel stupid about trying to figure out the decisions that you need to make if you're weighing pricing or different options or different you know, wall thicknesses or whatever you need to do. They don't make you feel dumb about trying to figure out what metal is right for you, which is a little bit rare in that industry. So I really appreciate that. We started going to metal supermarkets over three years ago when we started B is for Build and we needed to source metal. And uh, I, I didn't know much, um, but they've kept me on as a customer this entire time. I keep going back uh, and, and, and they're great people. So guys, when you're ready to source some metal for your next project, go to metalsupermarkets.com or click the link in the description below and you can find a store near you or you can start a quote. Huge thanks to Metal Supermarkets for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get down to work. All right, guys, so getting started, let me introduce you to our air to water intercooler. So this is one of our heat exchangers and this is our air to water intercooler. This is made by ETS. and I'm going to tell you all about their company and what they built for us a little bit later in the episode when we get ready to mount this thing. But this is pretty cool. So this is where the colder air comes in. This is where the warm or goes out. This is where the warmer air comes in. Um, it's this massive thing. It's pretty heavy. Uh, it's got our four mounting points right there and it needs to land right here in the engine bay. So basically turbo spools up that air, compresses it. It comes out of the turbo a little bit hotter than we want it. And it's going to come down into our air to water intercooler. Water will be flowing through it and then it will come back out and into our intake manifold that's right under that cloth. So my mounting point is right here. And what I want to be doing is building a cross brace. that's going to also help brace up the car a little bit um, and then hold our air to water intercooler. So we're going across from that point to that point and that point to that point. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to build a lot of this around uh, some of this stuff and some of that stuff. Aluminum. Okay, so our bolt-on face number one is done. This is kind of the prototype. Um, so this is, we're gonna have one of these for here, 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 and here. And then the bars are gonna go off of this face right here, kind of shooting across. Um, Lamborghini's bolts are all like wonky. See how that's off center and like that's wherever it is. And then these ones are center. They just kind of handmade Italian style, just do whatever they want when they are making these. So. Uh, I'm gonna have to adjust for that a little bit to make it look clean, but it shouldn't be too hard. So now I'm gonna make the other three. Finished cutting and drilling all my pieces. So these are all mounted into the car very nicely, very sturdily. I'm liking how they came out. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get my first piece of um, 
uh, square tubing, aluminum tubing that we're gonna use. It's really similar to this stuff. It's eighth wall, inch and a quarter, um, but I'm gonna be using some with rounded edges. Um, we're gonna, for everything on the back, all the scaffolding and the stuff up here, we're gonna be using stuff with radius edges so it looks a little bit more like what Lamborghini uses. We, like, we have the same radius as this right here to try and match kind of the rest of the theme of the frame. So I'm gonna get that piece and make my first diagonal. I think I'm gonna go, it doesn't really matter where I start, but I think the solid piece is gonna be from here to here. Okay, so I just wrapped up my first cross piece. You can see how nice this aluminum looks. It's gonna make it have a really nice finish, which I really like. So that piece is across here, tacked in. Now the next piece needs to intersect and Oscar and I were talking and we definitely think that the best way to do this is to actually take this piece off build this piece and then we'll kind of overlap the two pieces um, and then make a cut and then I'll start to trim back and stuff like that. But it's gonna be best to weld this one in here because we'll get the right angle set on the piece right off the bat. Cause that's the hardest part is kind of getting the angle to con continue through here. All right, I got this thing all cut up. It took a lot of cutting and sanding and cutting again and more sanding and stuff like that to get it all dialed in, but we got it totally dialed in. We actually have a bar underneath this that is uh, gonna support it height-wise and it's perfectly straight, so it's exactly like we want it. So uh, now Oscar's gonna come in and we're just gonna weld the top of these uh, real quick so everything will be uh, very well secured because these tacks are a little bit too soft. Um, I could weld this, but um, you guys have noticed that anytime anything's important needs to be welded, Oscar does it because uh, I'm quite the amateur when it comes to this TIG welding and Oscar's gonna get a more structurally sound weld. Uh, even if I made one look good, we don't know if it's gonna be as strong, so I'm always letting Oscar do all the welding on these types of things. So he's gonna go ahead and zip all these top welds. built myself into a problem, a uh, big problem. <laughs> we got a saying around the shop, I don't know where we stole it from, but big problems need big solutions. So it's big solution thinking time. Um, I've introduced this new piece that you guys haven't seen yet. This is our uh, rear hatch. You guys might've seen it when we went out to the Mullins shop uh, a, a couple episodes back when we were in St. Louis. Uh, we checked it out um, and then they sent it out to us. I'll explain kind of the game plan for this later, but really this is the rear hatch that I wanted. Mullins provided it for us. So I'll put a link in the description. Um, so I was putting this here to take a look at kind of the distance um, from the end of the bumper to here to here and then the measurements of this and you guys might be getting where I'm going here this can't fit in here and leave room for our exhaust to go out here and the exhaust coming out this area is like a must for me it was part of the design from the beginning turbo sticking out the top exhaust coming out the back something I really wanted I want flames going that way so I gotta figure out how to still make this a possibility. It's totally my fault because although ETS built this for us, um, I designed this thing and I sent them off the design with what I wanted. They tweaked some things to make for proper cooling, but basically let me design the thing. And then I should have, I thought we'd have so much space because the back was so big. 
and now we don't have space. I'm gonna tear some stuff down and try some stuff out. Alright guys, well big problems, big solutions, right? So to you guys it may have looked like we were just kind of goofing off, putting different things in different places, but a, a lot of thought goes into these cars, a lot of thought goes into the engineering and the building and the performance, but also the aesthetic and the look. So we're trying to not only build a car that will perform well, but looks insane and all that stuff. Uh, so man, we started with the air to water intercooler, placement of that, leading to placement of the heat exchangers, where they could go, um, leading to our hatch, leading to the hatch vents. Um, I'm just trying to walk you guys through the process here. So we were we were try testing out vent placement and stuff like that. I ended up not really liking any of the ways that the vents were configured because unless they're just completely flush, uh, which you can't because the turbo's there, they seem to stick out too much and they make the engine bay way too busy and they distract from the turbo. Also, they don't really fit the theme because all of our vents are very big. They're big sweeping actions here. So this is a work in progress. Uh, you guys will see this get finished in a later episode. Uh, but I had to bring it in to take a look at everything as a whole. Uh, anyways, it just didn't really look right. It didn't work. So I decided to actually kind of go with a hatch that's super minimal, barely any hatch at all. We're gonna have this piece, we're gonna have a bar that runs there, and then we're gonna have that top piece and then a trim piece, which then led us to the point that um, our engine bay is pretty pretty bland. It, it's too open. Um, and our plan was for the exhaust to go this way, around through here, through here, snake over, come back up and out. Um, but there's one solution to not making the engine bay look bland and not have anything to fill it, which is put the exhaust in there. So we came all the way around full circle to the game plan is now that the exhaust is gonna come. And yes, I looked at flipping the turbos around. I, I read your guys' comments. I do not wanna do that. I like the aesthetic of them facing this way. I just like the way it is. So anyways, exhaust is gonna come around here, do a bend around here. We're gonna come down and we're gonna follow kind of the body angles. And then we're gonna go up right where I wanted to. This does a lot of cool things. For one is it opens up the, all the space where we were gonna put the exhaust to put our heat exchangers. So that's great. Our heat exchangers can go under here. We're building a vent. We're gonna be 3D printing a massive vent that goes right here as per our render. And that will be a real functional event where we'll have a hole through this and we'll have a hole through this and it'll go straight to our heat exchanger, which is gonna be great so it'll get a good clean air. Also, when we move the exhaust around that way, we have the opportunity to put a muffler in the middle if we want to, well, two mufflers obviously. Um, if we wanted to, if it's too loud. Uh, and then another thing that it does is it keeps our exhaust. The other game plan was to, to wrap down that way, but you may notice that our fuel canister is right there and we have a filler neck that comes up right here. Keeping the exhaust away from the fuel and the fuel filler neck is an important thing on supercars because that is how the majority of them burn to the ground. And I don't want to bring this one back from the dead twice. So if you're still here and you're still listening, we've decided to change the exhaust, which actually changes a lot to our design. And it gives me a lot of opportunity to make changes. And it also means that I can move this basically wherever I need to that fits best. So I'm gonna get back to what I started on, which is finishing the placement for our air to water intercooler. Is it gonna hang from this bar like I had thought, or are we going to actually build up from the two braces across and just build it up from there? I'm gonna find out right now.
All right, I got my height and location picked out, so it's gonna be in the center of the car. Uh, one of these spacers high off of the frame rail, so we're gonna go ahead and build like a bridge. It's gonna go from here, it'll bolt in here, go up here, flat, down, and then we can build brackets that bolt into the, uh, to the bungs on the radiator, or the, air to water intercooler so this will kind of support its weight sitting on the bridges and then bolt in to keep its positioning by a little bracket right there so now i just got to get fabricating and start building my little bridges I got a bunch of pieces cut up. So with this, we're gonna use the rounded corner one inch by one inch with eight wall aluminum. Uh, so these are, we have four of these that come off of this piece and up. We got four of these as well. They fit into here. So we're gonna weld off of here, come off at a 45. And then this is half of a 45 degree angle. And then we have the other half of the 45 there. 45 and 45 makes, well, this is joining at a 45, so you use a half and a half. And then anyways, 45 down to there. So now we just gotta do some trimming on the rest of these where these lines are, start trimming this up and I could start tacking everything into place. We got these bad boys all tacked up and they are totally level to the car and level to the world so it's going to be a great you know shelf essentially for the air to water intercooler so uh normally i would have oscar weld these types of things out like i had oscar weld this out this super super important for the car it needs to be as strong as possible this I think is a good opportunity for me to practice my welding and learn my aluminum welding a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these over the bench and weld them out. If I get stuck or you know have any tricky spots, Oscar will give me some help, but uh, I think I can tackle these guys. They might not be the prettiest in the world, but they'll work and it'll be a good learning experience. All right, we got this thing welded up. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that my welds went, you know, for I haven't welded aluminum in probably nine months, 10 months, and uh, you know, I've never really put any practice into it. And it, you know, they came, they came out definitely good enough. Not, not super elegant, but they're gonna be strong enough to hold on to here. And once we get throw a coat of paint over them, they're gonna look just fine. So that was pretty fun. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do, drill and tap. So we're gonna be drilling holes through here. Uh, the bolt's gonna slide through here and then actually catch on this bottom layer uh, and then be into a rib nut in here. So two here, two here on both of these and we'll get these bolted in and then we'll be ready to build our brackets to mount the air to water intercooler to it. All right, we got these guys drilled out and bolted into the frame. And the spacing on this is exactly the same as the spacing on our air to water intercooler. So let's go ahead and set it up there and then we're gonna get ready to build the tabs. There's just gonna be some triangulated, well, triangle shaped tabs that are gonna come up here, come back down, they'll weld into here and then the tab will bolt right into our air to water intercooler to keep it steady. And then we'll put some nice like gasketing right here or something so it has something soft to sit on.
right, there we go. Our air to water intercooler is mounted. So I had Oscar cut a couple uh, triangles and then weld them in here. He did a fantastic job on those welds. I wanted those to look really pretty because they're very visible from the back. Once we uh, modify our back bumper, a lot of this is gonna be able to be seen. So uh, the game plan is is to uh, get some, actually, uh, we use this stuff that people use on house windows, kind of. It's sticky on one side and it's a nice little rubber gasket. It'll run the length of this bar underneath this thing. Uh, that'll help with grip shifting, which will put less stress on these things. And then uh, it'll obviously not scratch up our air to water intercooler. It looks amazing. Looks so good. I'm so happy with the way that this turned out. So we built the cross brace that we didn't really need, but it's good for cross bracing the car. So we did need it. And then we built this awesome kind of cross shelf to hold our air to water intercooler. So I told you I would tell you guys a little bit about the company that built this for me. So this was built by ETS. They're really close by to me. I actually went to their headquarters and checked out the stuff that they build. Really, really cool guys. Really, really cool company. ETS is Extreme Turbo Systems. They're, they are, they have their roots in drag racing. Uh, they really, really know what it means to build performance parts, build parts that will last, and they have some of the fastest cars in the world, and they do real testing, real world R&D. I was there when they were doing R&D on their uh, newest Supra and building their exhaust for the newest Supra. So guys, go check them out. I'm gonna put a link in the description uh, to their website and to their socials. They do daily sales on a bunch of different things. Uh, a lot of Subaru parts, they, they have a lot, well, for turbocharged cars, Supras, Evos, a bunch of stuff, they have a lot of parts but they also do a bunch of daily sales. If you follow on their Instagram, you might be able to catch them. Um, I can't recommend it enough. These are really, really cool guys, and I look forward to partnering with them on more things in the future. They, like I said, have some of the fastest cars in the world, especially GTRs and stuff, and uh, they have a lot they could teach me about drag racing, and since this is supposed to be a drag racing car, I got a lot of knowledge I need to steal from them. So uh, hopefully we'll be working a lot closer with them in the future and doing some drag racing events and stuff like that with these guys in the future. So hit the link, follow their Instagram, do me a favor, just go follow their Instagram. If they got a huge boost, it would make their day and it would make my day as well. So wonderful air to water intercooler. How does it work? Let me show you. The way an air to water intercooler works, by the way, if any of you guys don't really know, is normally when you, the, the, basically, I'm gonna make it as simple and as fast as I can. The air that comes out of the turbo is charged and when you compress that air, it gets warm. And it gets warmer than, than you want to just shove it right into your engine. If you have a front engine car, you can run just an air to air intercooler. The air goes right through that intercooler, cools it down, and it cools the air as it passes through. On a mid engine car, you can't really do that. Um, so, although we kind of could probably get away with it because of how, few body panels we have, which we already talked about in this episode. But anyways, the idea is that on mid engine cars, you run air to water intercooler. And what you do is you run water through a cooling chamber. So the air is gonna come out of the turbo, each of these turbos right here, follow me down. It's gonna go right into there and there, and that's how it intakes in. Then it gets cooled in these two chambers. These chambers are cooled through water flowing through them that also runs to a heat exchanger. So as they heat up, the water flows over to the heat exchanger, which cools the water back down and cools that thing back down. And then once the air passes through there, it'll be much, much colder than when it started, runs into our intake spot and then runs back into our engine. It's a huge, huge benefit. The cooler that you can get your air going into your engine gains tons and tons of horsepower. All right, guys, and with that, that is the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching it. If you want to help out and support, go buy some Disneyland merch. I'm just kidding. Go to bsforbill.com, get yourself a shirt or something else that's fantastic. All the proceeds of that go directly towards supporting us on these builds. So thank you so much to everybody that's already done that. Other than that, please remember to hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace! Come on.